As a leader, Barba is kind of like everyone's dad. You know, making sure everyone brought their toothbrush and clean underwear for the trip. Like, you sure you're happy with this mix? Because once it's done, you can't change your mind. Me, I'm more like a teenage daughter. You know, the, the real leader of the family. Spending a lot of time in my hair while the rest of the guys are working. Making sure I always get my way. I would describe it as pop music, but pop music with one leg firmly rooted in hip hop and R&B and that sort of stuff, and then the other in uh, American roots music, Americana blues, stuff like that. Um, those are the pillars, but then in between you have very strong pop song writing.
The head, he is always late. I mean, not just late, he is way beyond that. If he's like two hours late to a session, he, he will still feel he's right on time. But at the same time, once you get him going in the studio, you can't get him to stop working. So I guess he kind of evens out in the end. Famous quote from the head was when Barbara called him and he was like two hours late for his set. And he asked him, hey, what, what are you doing? <laughs> the head said, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working and snoozing. He's really a, he's a role model for all of us. He's got a young heart. All his, his dreams, his ideas for his future are like those of a teenager. It's like he got his whole life in front of him. And that's inspiring for the rest of us. Because, you know, well, you know, we dream too. We have high hopes for our future, but we kind of know we're not 16 anymore. And, and he doesn't. Or at least he doesn't see how that matters. He's just as hungry, just as right now, as, as any kid, you know? And I think that's really important in, in our business. Gramps is very professional. He comes in time with the right snare for the job and knows what to do. And he's also a songwriter in his own right, so he approaches the songs with that sensibility. Yeah. I mean, he, he listens to everything from, from Frankie Valli to Strapping Young Lad. It's a bit of a human encyclopedia too. If you're watching like a YouTube clip with a live band from, from like the 50s until now, you'll probably know all, all the members of the band, what they're playing and, and probably like disgusting things they were doing backstage after that gig. <laughs> he's also a grandfather and uh, I think he's playing that role very well. He's always telling stories and always laughing at his own stories. You know? He's got this really contagious laughter. It's great, I love it. The Kofa is, is quite experienced musician as well. He's a brilliant bass player and he always nails his parts really fast. And he also has this dry wit and he, he can be incredibly sarcastic in an absolutely deadpan way. And, uh, he, he, I mean, he's not a man of many words, but he can totally kill a conversation with a quick remark that will have everybody rolling on the floor laughing hysterically. We're all fairly sarcastic, but, but, but he's the master. He's become a great photographer, too. Maybe he just got bored of waiting around for us to nail our parts, needed a hobby. But he's taken a lot of great pictures of all of us. He usually shoots the videos, too. Those two, they're a great backbone team. We're lucky to have them.
Mr. Hot Lips. He is uh, he's our MacGyver. Whenever we need to build something, he, he's a go-to guy. He, he's a carpenter, so he knows more about building and restoring houses than anyone we've met, so especially old houses. When we arrive someplace with our old wooden structures, he'll, he'll give us a little lecture on when it was built and what construction techniques they used and what materials. <laughs> We're terrible pupils and we never remember any of this ever, but it's still fascinating to hear him talk about it. <coughs> Hot lips, it doesn't come from an academical musical background like us. He's been jamming around in blues bars and such. But he's an artist too. He drew all the sketches for the Seven Rivers Wine video and, and he's done other artwork for the band too. See, we, we keep it in the family. When we play live, Hot Lips is one of the highlights of the show. He, he's always got an ace up his sleeve. Preacher Man is the man who would fall asleep on top of his drummer nude twice in the same night. <laughs> <laughs> he was riding a motorbike while smoking and he had this girl riding with him and he didn't want to put it out because he thought it might land on her. So he decided to spit it out instead. Obviously an absolutely solid plan. And he thought it went well until he felt something burning in, inside his shorts. I don't think Preacher Man has ever been in a band before. We, we used to run a bar called Stockholm Speakies and I, I heard him singing from the kitchen. That deep, boomy voice took over the bar and I knew straight away we had to have him and Billy Momo. And he also has this fantastic look. Together with Morton, it's, it's pretty much the poster boy image of the band. Those two guys are like the yin and yang of the Billy Momo look. So, we had it grimt. And then we went and Jag är inte upp så lätt. Jag gick vidare till bastun. Vi ser upp vidare. Vi badade. Men sen hittade jag inga kläder och jag skulle i en handduk liksom ta mig hem. Det fanns något hem, något, någon, någon, någon bostad vi skulle bo i. Det var arrangerat. Jag hittar ju inte så bra. Och jag hatar hundar. Men jag gick in ett beskrivningen liksom och sen... Stod ett hus där. Jag tänkte att här kan du väl bo. Här borde du bo. Jag knackade på och ingen svarade. Så jag tänkte, vi är på landet, alla känner varandra, det var en liten by. Jag öppnade dörr. Ut kommer sju hundjävlar springande, galopperande mot mig. Skällande vilt och glatt. Jag ser inte så ljus på situationen, jag känner mig lite pinsam, jag står i ett badhandduk och det är ett främmande hus, hundar springer ut på gården. Där ska de inte vara, hundar ska vara i sitt hus eller vad de nu ska vara i, ja, vad de nu ska vara. Så jag börjar liksom kasta in hund efter hund som springer ut, nyper dem i vad det är, skinnet eller huden eller håret eller vad fan det heter. Kast, hivar in hund efter hund och det, så fort jag hivar in en så kommer två ut där bakom. Så jag, liksom, jag står och hivar in hundar. Situationen är ganska pinsam. Om jag skulle se de främmande kar i mitt hus som kastar in mina hundar i mitt hus, då skulle jag bli ganska rabiat. Men efter, efter ja, säkert fem minuter av inhivande av hundar som slidar runt på, 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 på golvet och sen springer ut igen 
så kommer ägare innan till huset. Men sig i käften. Och en dressing, en morning gown. Och säger med hjärtat, du är fel hus. In Billy Momo we do pretty much everything ourselves. We, we, we write the songs, we, we record them, produce, mix the albums, we make the videos. Everything from holding cameras and writing scripts and acting, all this, while doing gigs in between recording sessions, rehearsals and, and, and video shoots. So m making a new Billy Momo album is it's never really like a smooth cruise on the highway. With the top down and the sun in your face, you know, it's it's, it's more like a bumpy ride down a than a crooked dirt road trying to find your way. Yet, yet somehow the the end result comes out more personal and and interesting because of this. We think. Well, the work on this album started out pretty much as usual, I guess. We, me and Barbara, went out to that cabin in the woods and started trying out ideas and, and arranging all the songs and putting everything together. And then we, um, it was just a matter of, of putting the schedule together with the rehearsals with the band and, and recording sessions and all that. Grams and Barba did some double drum sessions on this album, just to get a thick, sort of soppy kind of Swampy fields in the sound. I'd be hard for Grams to do all that live. <laughs> <laughs> People ask us sometimes, how do we find the time to, to do this while keeping a full-time job and, and with families and kids and stuff? And I guess we just made sure that people close to us, people around us, understands and, and, and accepts that, that this is how we live. And there's just no, absolutely no spare time. You know, there's no time left. This is all we do. Plus, most of the work is done simultaneously, while working, while cooking for the family or, or playing with our kids. You know, suddenly sort of drifting off during conversation. It's, that, I guess, is, is how we find time. <laughs>
I think we're at that stage now with the band and we have intuition working both ways. They understand what we mean with our ideas and, and we can hear their interpretation of our ideas in our heads before they even played it. It might sound like a cliche, but this is 2016. N nobody's doing this for the money. If I did, I would have quit a long time ago. It's, it's, this is who we are, this is what we do, and we keep on doing it. We did some shows opening for Man For Man's Earth Band, which was awesome, and we also played a lot of shows on our own, so we've been busy. <laughs> One cool moment was a benefit show we did. We, we performed a version of I Got You with the live string section. And we had no time to rehearse with them before the gig, so they just learned the parts on their own and we met them on stage and just did it. I think there's a video from that actually. We, we can see that Morton gets really blown away by the, by the power and the vibe of the string section. album uh, 
that was before Barbara got divorced. And even though he didn't know his marriage was ending, it's it's there in the lyrics. You can you can tell the little hints all over the album in the lyrics, as if his subconscious knew. Many other lyrics are about breaking patterns, breaking up, change. The artwork for this album was quite ambitious. We worked with this artist, photographer called Robert Eldrim, who's really, really talented. They had a million ideas and they really understood what, what Billy Mom was about, you know. The cover art really represents us, you know, both as a band and as individuals. Me and Barba, we played with a lot of people through the years. We worked with a lot of songwriters and producers and such. And one thing that seems clear to me is what you really need is chemistry. Even though he's the most talented songwriter I know, it's still less important than, than being able to connect on a personal level, on an emotional level, being able to express the same thing. We found that sort of chemistry when we, uh, while playing together as musicians for other bands. And I guess that's why we wanted to start our own band too. Then when we wanted to, to expand the band, uh, I mean, we, we know a lot of great musicians, but, but we knew that we needed that sort of chemistry. So it seemed natural to, <laughs> to find people among family and close friends. You can tell when we're on the road together. It's it's one of the best parts of the whole thing, you know, just to hang out. We have to baby proof everyone before bringing them home to the family. Leave the devil behind. What the fuck? Sell this on the store. There you go. Det är så här att vi tycker det är rättvist när vi spelar tillsammans att alla ska vara lika trötta när vi går av scen helt enkelt. Och det är så det är en i bandet som är jävligt mycket piggare än alla andra. Och det är Tony Lind. Trummorna. Han är morfar och ändå är han piggast av alla. Så nu får han stanna här själv med lite stund. Vi kommer sen. We were planning upcoming concerts and tours. Our, our manager Biggest, she, she will sometimes ask us, do, do you guys want to have some time off during this period? But for us, going out to play is our time off. We, I mean, we may not be Led Zeppelin or the Wu-Tang Clan when we go out there, but we have a good time. What could be 
better than being in a band with some of your best friends. You get to go on the road, play music, meet interesting people, and leave your responsibilities at home and be pirates for a while. I can feel a sermon coming, some of the choir. Can you feel a distant humming? Turn the gospel to fire. I'm following me.